Yo, what up, street dogs? There, Kim. All right, the thought. Why live a more interesting life? What does it mean to live a more interesting life and uh, how to do it? So the general first thought is there's not much we could actually control in life. However, one thing we could control is the degree in which, um, you know, how many interesting risks to take in our life. Certainly, nobody wants to be homeless or, you know, you probably don't want to go skydiving every single day. And so as long as you avoid any risks, which you're avoiding, um, you know, terminal injury or uh, you know, losing a limb or even chances of going 100% bankrupt, it seems like in life, life's actually much more interesting when we live a more interesting, exciting life. So. How does one define living a more interesting, exciting life? So, I tend to think that the more time you spend outdoors, the more time you spend outside of your apartment and engaging with different forms of embodied reality, uh, the better. Uh, I know for myself personally, uh, even something as simple as uh, going into the gym and working out the gym, I mean, depending on, you know, the legalities of your state, or whatever. Currently here in Rhode Island, gyms are open, which is good for me. And yeah, to invest in things which seem quite risky. So for example, um, two years ago, I was interested in, uh, about three years ago, um, I, I started getting to more interested in like uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, bought some Bitcoin and bought some um, Digibyte, DGB. And uh, finally, about like two years later, looked at it and actually surprisingly it went up sold some of the Bitcoin for US dollars, uh, and then I transferred my entire Bitcoin balance into um, trading it for something called Chainlink. I, you could just search a link, L-I-N-K. It's a more you know, speculative bet, which could have higher upsides. And um, holding on to my Digibyte DGB, I think it might be the future for like a more practical cryptocurrency where you could just buy a cup of coffee at a local coffee shop, whatever. Uh, that's DGB. And yeah, like even the reason I sold my Bitcoin is like it almost seems like the more certain bet. Like I'm sure there's just going to go up. I mean, um, when I bought it, it was around like $7,000 a Bitcoin and then it plunged down and then I sold some at around like, you know, it's like at like 27000 or 25000 or something like that. Um, and there's already some economists who are saying, oh, you know, technically uh, one Bitcoin should be worth at least $300,000, whatever it may be. So I'm quite certain that, you know, in the long run, in the next like 10, 20, 30 years, the value of Bitcoin is going to be higher then than it is now. So to me, that almost seems like the, the safer bet. But things, you know, some sort of like um, alternative uh, cryptocurrencies or tokens or technologies, uh, that seemed much more interesting to me, it seemed to be kind of more of a fun, interesting, exciting path and option. And yeah, like I think it's certainly, it's pure speculation, it's kind of more like gambling at this point, but I don't know, I think, I mean, there's lots of things in life which are like kind of like gambling. I mean, gambling is technically just a slur to say something that's super, super risky and speculative, or I mean, in the proper sense, I mean, the game is rigged against you when it's like a controlled environment, like a casino, a centralized entity. But now with the internet and you know a lot of uh, blockchain technologies, it's all decentralized. So there's probably more chances for upside than downside. But anyways, um, I think the main reason to live a more risky life is that it's just more fun and interesting. And I think this life is the only certainty that we got. I know that choosing the more exciting, riskier options and life paths in life gives me more hope, joy, optimism, and more excitement for the future. A world where that's totally uh, certain seems like the more boring life. And I think that's one thing that uh, uh, the whole COVID thing has taught me is everything in life is uh, uncertain and one cannot plan too far ahead. But lately I've been thinking at like the 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 year mark, you know, how are technologies and things gonna be uh, different, you know, in a, you know, in the decades, like trying to think, I mean, it's, it's hard to try to think 30 years from now, but I mean, 
I'm only 32 right now, 30 years from now, I'll be what, like 62? And, you know, I'm sure I'll still be in fantastic health and stuff like that. So trying to predict what the world is going to look like 30 years from now is quite difficult, but certain trends, which I find quite certain, people are going to hear more about privacy, there's going to be more advertising in life, more tracking, um, people are going to want like more like cryptocurrencies or some other technologies which um, head more towards deregular, um, decentralized forms of uh, you know, money transferring and stuff like that. Um, the reason why Chainlink is so interesting is that maybe it could uh, replace or at least supplement the SWIFT banking, international banking system. People are going to want fewer fees. People are going to want less friction to send monies and stuff like that. Um, you know, people are going to care more about health, mental health, and stuff like that. More and more people are going to use smartphones. It's going to be more integrated into our lives. Even now, we're already starting to use QR barcode scanners to scan menus at restaurants. And I actually was recently at a restaurant where you could just scan the menu where you could pay via PayPal or Venmo. So certainly it's not going to be that far ahead where most restaurants are going to allow you to pay with your phone, with your cryptocurrency wallet or whatever it may be. But anyways, so the, the skinny of it is when you choose the more uncertain, riskier, exciting route in life, you just get you could gain the maximum delight, excitement, and joy in life. 